Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of American Signature Podcast. Today we got Craig Zimmer with Hero to the Line uh, dog program. So uh, Craig, take it away, man. Tell me about yourself. Hey man, I'm, um, my name is Craig Zimmer, obviously. Um, Hero to the Line is a project we started a couple of years ago um, where we're taking well-bred retriever puppies and trying to give them to service veterans and active duty members um, to get them involved in the retriever sports. Um, it's not necessarily about giving away a free puppy. It's it's more or less giving you the relationships and the friendships that you create within the community that we all run around in. I mean, that's how me and you met. Um, that's how many, probably ninety percent of my friends in this on this planet I've met through this uh, through this world of dogs. Yeah. So they uh, yeah. So <laughs> I actually had a litter on the ground, and I'd seen you run another business where you, you kind of the. Um, marketing slash sales for for puppies and breeders about that on your personal business and you and i talked about the litter i had on the ground and then um we just talking about what i did for a living you know just what normal people do and you started telling about this program you just kicked off and we're just starting and and trying to get some sponsors and get people spun up about and dogs and stuff like that and then you and i carried on conversation and i and i kind of i gave you some tips on the on the veteran side maybe you know how to right. talk about that but I remember correctly, I mean, you're pretty passionate about it. Now, you're never in the military yourself, but no. you personally know the benefits that a, a dog can help somebody that's recovering from anything and, and through the trials that you went through. And, and you can get in that here in a minute if you want to. But I just thought it was neat. And you and I have been talking for a while about doing a podcast. And I said, yeah, let's do one, but let's wait until after you've gotten your first couple great sets of puppies gone so we can tell the whole story about how they've gone and, right. how it's been and stuff like that. And so now y'all have actually... I've got some out there and there's vets with puppies and, and dogs and running hunt tests. So kind of kind of go from conception to to today, you know, how everything's laid out and how it's going. Yeah. So we when we started two years ago, it was just kind of a I don't know. So I, my ex-wife was in the service. Um, so I was a military spouse. So, I mean, I'm kind of familiar with a little bit of the lifestyle. Um, but I reached out to a breeder friend of mine, um, asked him if he would pretty well donate puppies from his litter um we pair, we got to pair a really really amazing stud uh his name's cosby uh the owner of him is cindy grips over um and then deuce williams from bourbon country his dog stomp we were able to pair them two together and create three amazing puppies um hold on this dog's driving me crazy go you're good go ahead now go <clears throat> um those three puppies went to went to three individuals uh kayla hood Ian Thomas and Hugo Ramirez, um, all three kind of located on the East Coast of the U.S. Uh, Hugo actually has now gone on to title his own dog, uh, Hero to the Line Luna. Uh, she got her started title a couple weeks ago, which is a pretty big deal. I mean, the guy's never trained a dog in his life. Um, didn't it? Doesn't duck hunt. Uh, never done nothing. Um, yeah. We get them paired up with. Uh, with a few people around him and he just kind of ran with it. Um, so the goal is the, with after those three veterans, we kind of fine tune things a little bit. Um, sponsorships is not what it should be in my opinion. I mean, it, it's hard to get people to donate anything anymore. Uh, there's been a lot of organizations abuse the powers. Um, so we, we found three more veterans, um, Daniel Sutton, Alan Mast, and Clay King, we went down to Huntsville, Texas that time. Um, those three were from different parts of the country as well. Uh, we got to get two puppies from Wingate Kennels up here in Indiana from my home state. Uh, and then we got one puppy from Texas. Now, we were able to get them three guys, man, they're, they're guns blazing. Um, Daniel trains a couple days a week. He's down, in, he's over in Virginia. He's in Southern Virginia, Northern Virginia. He's running around with the pros up there. Um, he's got himself into a, into a field trial pickle. You know, he wants to go try to run the derbies. I said, man, you got some big cojones if you're going. Yeah, to run. man. The white coat That's game the, is a different animal. Yeah. Well, and he's never had it. He's never he's never done any of this, man. I got the I got the luxury to spend 15 hours in the car with him on the ride to Huntsville, Texas, and. Uh, probably some of the most memorable time memorable time I've ever had on this planet. I mean, the, the conversations with that man were amazing. Um, and I've got the chance to spend a lot of quality time with Hugo. 
Uh, me and him, we went and run a hunt test together in New Jersey. His first test, man, in the, to watch the passion on somebody's face when they receive a dog for the first time, whether they pass or fail, when that dog comes back to the line the first time, it's a with judges behind you, man. It's a, it's an accomplishment. It really is. Um, so we've also got uh, David Shea, who got a puppy from Goshi Labs. Um, he's down there close to you. I've got he's kind of got hooked up with you a little bit. Yeah, he's the one you linked me up with, and he's about yep. four and a half hours south of me. But I, I found some hunt test clubs and some retriever clubs down that area that I linked him up with. And uh, and so people he can actually go train with on their training days and run their hunt test and, and go that route. Which is crazy because because when we first me and him and first talked about this, he actually was one of the key people to to kind of help me get this uh, off the ground from the beginning. You know, we linked up with uh, with the TFO, the Fallen Outdoors. Um, really, just one guy, uh, Michael Little. Um, he's up in Team Maryland. Uh, I mean, the guy's amazing. He's done everything in the world to help us. Um, David Shea was kind of his right hand man before he got restationed down in Alabama. Um, and, and he really just was looking for a shed hunting dog. He really wasn't interested in our world. And then as you go through our, we got a group chat with all of us, man. And you can't help but get excited in, in that group chat because the, just the things people are posting, the work their dogs are doing, you know, these guys got puppies. I mean, Hugo and Luna, Luna's not six months old. I mean, in the tests we were at running, I mean, there were dogs that were a year, year and a half. Uh, I mean, for, for the man to have no experience with a dog that's, I mean, we're giving them quality dogs. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing is making sure that these dogs are health tested, well bred, um, and I'm fortunate. It's no my, different. So it's like no different if somebody wouldn't actually go out there and buy yeah. a top of the line, absolutely hunting bred, hunting bred hunt test dog with health clearances. It's the yep. same quality dog with the exception that you have people donating these dogs yep. for this cause. So for instance, the uh, Cosby Cosby's a Grand Hunter Retriever Champion up in Hunter Master Hunter. Um, comes from some amazing field trial lines. Um, mom, mom stumps, stumps a, a chocolate or yellow chocolate factored female, Cosby's chocolate factored. Uh, so we were able to have kind of an intermingled chocolate and black. Uh, but they're both mild manner, easily trainable, but also have enough drive to get you off your couch, right? So that's the, that's the ticket here is if you don't do what we're asking you to do, these dogs, I tell every veteran, and then everybody does this, they laugh. If you don't do what I'm asking you to do, this dog will eat you out of house and home. Your wife will dislike you. Your kids will not like you. So you will get up because if you don't, uh, you're, you're going to be stuck. The dog's going to yeah. eat everything you own. Um, and, and that stands true. But making sure they got enough of an off switch, too, where they're not a pest in the house. You know, the 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 black dog here next to me, he's he doesn't know off, right? He, he's a thousand yeah. miles an hour. He wants to go pick up 20,000 birds a year. It, it, he just he just doesn't know when to stop. Now, you give this to somebody and they'll never succeed, right? You want to make sure that we're giving them quality pups. And that's that's the nice part about my, my personal businesses with my relationships with people and now breeders coming on board to the Hero of the Line project to, to basically say, and this is what I give them all, I got to be able to call you with some dates and say, hey, here's – Date number one, two, three, four. These are when I need puppies. Um, are you willing to give one at that time and, and be able to steal a puppy from whatever litter I think fits our program best? Um, and and then the the pour out of support from our breeders and and really from trainers. I mean, there's only a few parts of the country that we don't have pretty quality relationships with people. You know, Iowa being one, which is a really really hard place. Um, a lot of produce winter up there or summer up there, but they don't stay up there all year. Yeah. So it's hard to find help for a guy that has got a trainer that's rolling in, rolling out, or they're up there just to run a two month circuit. And that's their home base. Um, it's, it's hard to find the support. Uh, and then also out West, you know, California, those areas, you know, I don't have a ton of relationships personally out that far. Um, so making sure that we can find the support for our veterans, you know, anybody that wants to get involved, um, reaching out to us, man, really is, 
is the biggest thing. It, it get, giving us people to be able to send a veteran to and say, hey, man, this guy's never done this with a dog. Can you help him? Because you know as well as I do, if you get the collar conditioning and force fetch and you mess that up, your dog's not going to do what you want it to do, right? Oh, yeah. You, you can really ruin a dog at those stages. Um, but, yeah, it, we've been pretty successful thus far, man. I, everybody that's involved is has really gone with it. Uh, Kayla Hood, she's actually just shot some of her first heel over top of her dog here. Just uh, We just got pictures the other day, um, which is amazing. I mean, even if they don't come and get involved in the competition side of it, but but getting involved in the sport itself, you know, working a dog, you know, the relationship with you and that dog is, is priceless. I mean, like you said earlier, you know, th this sport has saved my life multiple times. Um, this dog next to me, especially, right. I, I've, I've had a pretty crappy life, I'd say. And, and this dog has really helped me kind of regain my momentum and, and, and really push to, to help other people, you know, cause suffering from PTSD, those types of things, man, it's a, it's a wound without scars and you, you don't understand unless you understand. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd say that, that's really the best way to put that. Speaking of that, I think we got one of the guys trying to jump in now, Hugo, we to him and okay. have him jump in on here. Hugo, you on, man? Technology. So we get here. All right, so his camera's off. Let's see. Hugo, Hugo. He's getting there. He's getting there. <laughs> you got to give him a minute. Technologically unsavvy. <laughs> got to love him, though. Hey, we got somebody. Look at it. There he is. I think he's coming. Hold on. Where's he at? Yo, I'm right here, brother. I see you. Look at there's that beautiful man. Look at him. Yo, I, I'm sorry, dude. I'm late, man. I oh, apologize. you're all right. You're all right. You're good, man. We just getting kicked off. We've only been going for about about 10 minutes now. And uh Craig was telling me about the program, you know, or telling everybody on the podcast, you know, kind of the program, how you got started, the benefits of it. And then uh, he mentioned your name a couple of times, something about owning some money, some some guy from <laughs> New York. But I, I don't know. Y'all can hash that out later. But, but, and you, but you and I ain't met yet, but it's uh, it's nice to finally meet you, buddy, and uh, and see your face-to-face -face with, with your pup. Uh, something I was about to ask Craig or, or even go over, and y'all can allude to it here in a minute. So we've kind of gone over. You know, hey, this is how Craig got started. This is kind of where they're at now, and and the stuff that they've done, and people with tests and the started started titles going on, and everything. So titling dogs and having fun. But what is the way? Well, hey, in my mind, I see this not only as a as a hunting dog, a hunt test dog, but also as a as a as a therapy dog. You know, a lot of people, a lot of vets have therapy dogs. I hit 18 years in this month, so I got two more years. I mean, I'm not out the door yet, but I'm putting my boots on. Getting ready, getting ready to lace right. them up. So, um, you know, some of them get therapy dogs, which are great partner dogs, but I feel like, you know, they can do more and you can do more with them than just them walk around Lowe's with you or get, on a, get on a get on a plane with you. And a lot of people think that you have to go out and buy a trained therapy dog or a training, but the actual, the Veterans Disability Act actually says you can train your own therapy dog as long as you have something going on so i feel like that's a key key thing that especially with this who says therapy dog can also be a hunt retriever champion or hunt retriever or a duck dog or vice versa so bef before i get in with hugo real quick sp speak on that just a little bit and then kind of give me the qualifications what do, what are your left or right limits your qualifications to qualify a bet for one of these dogs um, I, I think I think the biggest thing is is making sure that everybody understands that this is not a, a disability driven um, program, right? So you could be a normal dude that just duck hunts on the weekends, um, and you just have an interest in dogs. I mean, in reality, you you could be a, a chick that has never done this before. Uh, you know, you, you might not even hunt, but now the dog interests you. Um, and, and I think the biggest part about this is what you have in the military 
is it doesn't matter who you are. Everybody's there for the same purpose, right? We all come home for the same reason. We all go to work for the same reason. Um, it's the same thing at a dog test, man. Everybody's there for the same purpose. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, we're just there for the dogs. Um, and, and your relationships are built off of the dog. Um, I, I, really, the, the biggest thing is, is there's a, a, small, a small set of questions. Um, I think it's like five or six questions. And all it does is basic breeder questions. If you go buy one of these dogs from any one of these breeders, they're going to ask you the same basic five questions. You know, where do you live? Do you have a yard, fenced in yard? Um, are you prepared for a dog? Uh, does your landlord say you're allowed to have one if you rent? Just those basic questions. And then give me a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm not looking for hero stories. I, you don't need to give me some long, some long drunk out. I mean, if you want me to, man, I'm, I'm here. You can ask Hugo. You can ask anybody in this. My phone's always on. Um, and, and man, if anybody wants to chat, hang out, come up here and sit in my duck blind and watch the Tweety Birds for a couple weeks. I mean, they're more than willing um, or more than welcome. But I think the the biggest thing is, man, just be a veteran, be honorably discharged, be an active duty member, um, National Guard, Coast Guard, Marine, Army, Air Force. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, just some just kind have of veteran a, status. Yeah, just have a passion for the – even if you don't have a passion for the outdoors, I'll build that in you. I, I promise you. These, well, these, dogs will, these dogs will give you something that you didn't know you ever had, it, regardless of if you need help or don't need help, or if it comes at a point in your life where it saves your life, man, great, because that's what we're here to do. We're here to save people's lives, and, and that's, that's the God's honest truth. I mean, there's entirely too many people that kill themselves every day. Um, man, why not change that with dogs? Yeah, yeah, definitely, and I think it can be a twofold benefit also, because we're as I'm a duck hunter, you're a duck hunter. Now, somebody brought me into duck hunting. I didn't grow up duck hunting. But yeah, we you know guys that, not a duck hunter. I know, but we know that the duck hunting numbers, hunter number license are going down, right? And they're always trying to find Ooh. ways to, to get new people interested. And I think this is a great program to help benefit that, either with Delta or Ducks Limited, you know, in combination, doing that. Hey, we're getting people that had nothing to do with, with the retrieval road at all and get them retriever. Well, then they're going to go to hunt test. Well, then you're going to want to play the game for real sometime. To me, hunt test is the game, but the real game is for me going out there and doing it for real. So yeah. you want, you're going to go play the big game sometime and, and, and see your dog actually do what, what it's meant to do, not just qualify doing it, but actually do it in real life too. Yeah. It's just fun to see that, and I feel like this is something that could help uh, generate awareness, A, for the veterans, and for you know us needing the duck population hunting license to be increased also for the habitat management and the research that we utilize for that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Hugo, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, let's see, uh, air force vet, uh, also did some time in the army. I did 28 years, uh, retired in 2015, got medically retired. Um, I heard about this program through the fall on outdoors on Facebook and, um, I've always been a dog guy, you know, never had a retriever, no clue about the retrieving world and the whole hunt test thing. My first exposure to it was uh, back in April when uh, Craig gave me a call and said, I want a pup and uh, blew my mind, man, blew my mind. I was like, wow, these dogs are just amazing, amazing. And uh, I trusted Craig completely. I even dude he even picked my pup i was like dude you know to help me pick a pup he picked them picked her and she's just amazing it's completely uh put a whole new purpose on my day oh you awesome know, it, it, it really has uh, uh changed my life pretty much completely this dog uh not so much uh on a, on a, a therapy thing maybe in a way sort of uh, but more, more, more importantly, uh, just give me some good, good direction. My, my boys are grown. My youngest just uh, started his uh, senior year in college. And I just needed some direction. Uh, and, and this dog's given, given me purpose and, and, and a lot of meaning to, uh, to the things that I do. Yeah, I see a lot of us in military 
are goal oriented or mission oriented, there's always a task to complete, right? And so right. whether it's retire from the military, get your kids through school, get education, build a house, buy a house, accomplish a mission, it's always the goal, the task, the step, right? And so yep. when you kind of hit that stage in your life, maybe where, like you said, the kids are grown and you find you find you're that old guy just driving through Lowe's just to be driving through Lowe's and you don't know, you know, if you need something from there or not, you know, you need right. something to work on. You hit the nail on the head, man. You you hit the nail on the head. As a matter, yeah, it's that purpose. It's, uh, I remember, Craig, you know, jokingly, we were like, you know, who's going to title this dog first? And that boom, right there, just uh, put a, you know, put a goal in my mind. If I want to, I want to title this dog. Just even if it's just started, I want to get her there. Yeah, yeah. man, it's, you got to start somewhere. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of pros don't run and start at their junior test, um, but I think it's great for the owner handler, which is what you essentially are. And to do that, I've done that with my personal dogs because you don't know what you don't know. And yeah. uh, some of those tests, even though they might be a starter test or a junior test, they're still no joke. I mean, I see lots of dogs fail them. Uh, my first junior test, there's 46 dogs that went in and 16 of them passed. I do you know, that the, the started the first started test he ran. Um the two the the judges that put that on, I mean the the started landmarks were no joke, man. I mean they, they were well bird bird placement, beautiful bird placement. Um and then the watermarks. I mean, we're not talking 10 yard, 15 yard, we're talking 30 yard, 40, 50 yard marks for, yeah. for a puppy that's six months old. I mean, not granted, we know there's we know there's puppies. I know puppies in Texas that are 10 months old going out there doing 350 yard long retires and already handling, but that's, that's a completely different world. That's not the world that I'm looking for, right? We're looking for that hunt test world, this, uh, this camaraderie, this. That's this right. Friendship. And that's why I almost a lot better about the started in, in the junior level test is the fact yeah. that most of them are just the owner handlers with their first dog, second dog. Um, most and everybody's pros, there to help you. Yeah, and most of the pros are there for the, you know, the uh, senior and the finished or the uh, season and the master. And so um, even even the judges, you know, they might set a hard test or I say a hard test. They might set a fair test that really test your dog's skills and, and, and natural ability. But they'll still answer your question. You tell them, this is my first time. They'll say, hey, come hang out with me. Come sit under the tent. Let me talk to you while these dogs are running. Let me show you. You know, that's, that's been what I've seen anyways, the hunt test I go to. And I know guys that, that have won the SRS crown as a non-pro and have titled many master hunter, master national dogs as non-pros and uh, HRCH and grand dogs. And now that they're judging, they just want to judge junior and start a test. Yeah. They, say, they like seeing that young dog going and doing it for the first yeah. time. And they like the handlers. They like the that's owner true. handler portion of it. So when Hugo, Hugo, when you say, you know, just to start a title, Hey man, don't don't knock it. It's not just start that. I mean, there's there's a lot of by no by no means am I by no means am I knocking it because when (laughs) I when I was first exposed to this sport and seeing what these dogs could do, it's I mean I I thought I was I thought it was a huge mountain I was climbing just to get to that started level and to see her progress and just the quality of the breeding that she comes from. um, I mean, the program within itself and picking its breeders and and whatnot is just it's top quality, man. It's top quality. So somebody just now coming in this world, I had dogs growing up. They were always just house dogs, farm dog, whatever. So I didn't actually get a, a actual bred dog for retrieving until after I'd even been ducking for 10 years because I've seen a lot mm-hmm. of people with their with their labs that they got, you know, that weren't. I don't say not bred for it, all labs bred for it, but that generations had gone and gone and gone without right. having it. So that proven line. That proven line. So Hugo, in your world, you said you've had dogs in the past, but can you tell a difference in actually having a dog with the mindset or the smart, <laughs> with the bloodline? I mean, I mean I've, had, I, I've had other smart dogs. I had German Shepherds, one of the smartest breeds. I tell you what, this this Black Lab is head and shoulders. I, 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 sw- I, I swear she speaks English. <laughs> I, I swear. I, sw- I swear she understands me, man. It's, it's insane. And, uh, and the the affection that she gives out, the way, just her whole temperament, it's perfect, man. It's per, it's. I've had shepherds, I've had Yorkies, uh, we've had dogs over twenty years, and nothing, so, nothing, nothing with the with the brains that this dog has. It's unbelievable. It's it's unbelievable. It's it's frightening, unbelievable. 
So what are y'all currently working on now? You said Luna, Luna is her name? Luna, yeah. yeah. Right now, uh, got to go get a big uh, green one. Yeah, right now we're in the process of a uh, little collar conditioning and trying to get into some force fetch. Um, when I went up to do my last hunt test up in Mexico, New York, I hooked up with some people and uh, they're going to help me help me do that. I'm going to take a, a ride up there. And uh, you were talking about the the people within the community, top notch, man, top notch from being welcoming to being helpful. Uh, I mean, even in my hometown HRC club here, when the, the one of the guys found out I was doing my first hunt test, this dude brought out his wingers and everything and set everything up to do a mock hunt test for me. Nice. You know, it, it was it was um, it was just this just the helpfulness that people want to give is is awesome man it's awesome it's embracing uh and like i said at, at lake audrey i was like i feel like i'm home you know it's down yeah. to earth people it, uh, I, I was a little skeptical thinking it was going to be a little pinky up and uh man i'm glad it's not <laughs> oh yeah not not in the slightest right right just not down to earth people just just normal folks just having fun with their pup you know and the, and the funny thing is man is we all come from different regions you know like the, the region that, that me and you live at me or uh, that I live in, I mean, we live in one of the largest HRC regions in the country, but it's, it doesn't matter. They all interchange with each other and you get to, you get to meet one guy from, from this region of the country. Then all of a sudden you're talking to a guy from down in Texas. Now, when you, you travel with your dog, you're thinking, you know, let's take the wife and kids to the beach, but Hey, I can train on the way down. Cause uh, John's place there is on the left-hand side. Let's just go there and stop there and train. You know, I mean, you start thinking like that, you know, your life really evolves around the dogs, man, especially, you know, I, I, I hope that every veteran takes it and wants to go chase them big green ones, right? I, you know, after Hugo title, you know, I sent him a picture of my, my ribbon case and I was like, man, here's a little motivation to go chase them big green ones, right? When you got a case it, that looks real pretty, right? And you got a bunch of ribbons in there, man, it's a, the hard work's worth it. You know, I mean, obviously – I, I cheated most of the way, you know, my dog's pro trained, um, but still the passion for the sport, uh, is there. That's right. So he, he go, are you going to, you going to test it out this year? Are you going to, you going to get in the water this winter with Luna and see, uh, she seen pick you up a couple. First of all, see if you can even shoot a couple and then see if you can go get <laughs> I, them out the day. I've, I've, hunt, I've hunted deer. I've hunted bear. I've hunted, uh, turkey, you know, uh, but but uh, I want to get out there. I've never I've never waterfowl or upland hunted, and I want to do that. Bad. I've got some invitations. I got some dates lined up. But most definitely, Luna's going to get out in the water this year. With, yeah, the the plan is to getting the to down or to Maryland with uh, with me and the breeder Luna Deuce Williams oh, nice. at Bourbon Country. Man, yeah, me and him are supposed to go up there and do some sea duck hunting this year. Hopefully, hopefully get to drag Hugo along with us and get him out there in a blind. I'll, uh, that that I think is the the biggest thing to take from this program is, you, man, the, the people that you meet, the friendships you can't you can't find that anywhere else. You really can't. The, uh, the, the people in this program, the breeders that are involved with it, the from our chat room. I mean, we got uh, Maria. She's over on the. I can't remember Maria's last name. Um, she's over over there with Hugo. She's she's helping us with our social media stuff. Um, you got Guy Anderson, who's who's been a pro trainer for you know twenty years, thirty years, um, answering questions for veterans. Um, he's he's going to sit on our board. Um, you got Tim Platt, who's a who's a business guy who can really help answer some financial questions about dogs and and kind of how to approach the world in a because because in the, in reality the goal is is to make sure that they have the financial benefits of this sport down the road as well. Like me and you were talking about before we got started here. Um, you know, a good litter of puppies, you can make a good bit of money. Um, and even a really nice stud dog, you know, if, if you put the work in and you grind and you work hard, you know, there is financial benefits to it. There's friendships, man. There's, it's life changing. It's all you can really say until you stand on the line and you receive a dog. You'll never know. Oh you'll yeah. No, even that. Yeah. I mean, it's great. It's great. You know, you know, you're not a, um, What's the word? I'm trying to be political correct here, but you're not a uh, puppy breed meal, right? You're still, you're still not just trying to sell it. That I've had three liters of my dog, 
um, just because I, I enjoyed her so much. I thought, how cool it'd be for her to have some puppies, right? And really, the money, time, and money you spend in them from the beginning, <coughs> all you really do is make some of that back with the puppies. Yeah, you're, you're mean, gonna really. make. We always call it our break even or or, yeah. or profit puppy, right? So you're usually your fifth, your sixth puppy in the litter might be your break even puppy. Yeah. You know, and your and your seventh and eighth might be your profit puppy. Um, but I think the biggest takeaway from this whole thing, and, and, and especially getting these guys to these guys and gals to understand that these dogs are are from breeders who really steward the breed. I mean, we're not here breeding uh, what do you call fashion colors, right? I'm yeah. not interested in the Gucci color of the month. You know, that's that's pretty much what, what what dogs are anymore. You know, everybody's got a different shade they want to create or different coat pattern or whatever the case is. But we we breed for for performance, right? Uh, I want a proven dog in the field. I want a proven nose. I want a proven marking ability. Um, and if you can compare those together, man, you can create some of the most high powered dogs on planet Earth. And and if you've never got the ability to I'm sure you've been in a field with dogs that, you know, where guys got to throw shotgun shells or pebbles at the at the ducks to pick them up, right? And or can't you get the dog out there right before the dog eats it. Yeah, and you go out there and they're laughing at you because you got all this money invested in this dog, and but then you you don't ever even get out of your layout block. You're casting your dog from laying down, and and their mind is blown, and they're like, well, "How'd you do that? What well, time, effort, training? You know, putting the work in. You know, hashtag put the time in." That's right. You, you got to. Um, if you don't, uh, you're never going to succeed, and your and your dog will make you pay for it. I mean, I'm sure there's days that Hugo don't want to get up, and that that puppy. I mean, there's days like this melon head right here. You know, he there's times that he, uh, you know, he'll make me get out of this house. Because if you don't, he, he, we're going to kill each other. You know, we got to get up and do something. But well, even then, what I liked about the duck hunting before I even had a dog, and, and Hugo may may be able to find this too, but so I was on recruiting duty when I started duck hunting, and I was right beside a WMA where we had public duck hunting, and some people started taking me. I was like, man, I ain't got all day to go out there. He's like, no, we'll go in the morning. We'll go shoot some ducks. We'll be back at the office by 8, 830. Mm. You know, I was like, wow, you know, that, uh, that kind of fit my schedule, you know, a little better. <laughs> And of course, nowadays I'll go sit for a half a day now, but I can also cook while we're out there, have four or five people, and we'll cook breakfast in the blind or run dogs, talk dogs, or whatever. But I just enjoyed it on the schedule side because I was on recruiting duty, and that's that's what got me got me going. I went and did my PT in the mornings, and uh, instead of instead of hitting the gym, I went and swamped through a through a, a buck brush on public land and chasing that down. So anybody that can do that, I think it works out. Yeah, you can't. You 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 he'll catch the bug he'll get out there one time in a duck blind and when you got uh, my my guy my real good my best friend he's a big deer hunter and um he i keep messing with him and i said man once you get in there and you got wings cupped and feet down and they're coming in with landing gear on there ain't nothing like it on planet earth you, you'll never you'll never experience that anywhere else so People, no, so y'all are actually set up as y'all are a five hundred one c three. You got your we're, new board going. Well, our paper, our, so we're our paperwork should be filed here by the end of the month. Um, we got a guy helping us kind of get all that paperwork uh, situated, uh, and then uh, hopefully here by the end of the month we will have our five hundred one three c status um, and and be able to be able to start promoting that way. And then you said y'all got a board set up. Um, yep. breeders, do you have any you got TFO with the, the one guy at TFO helping you out? Y'all trying to get into that. So, what are y'all needing now? I mean, if there, if, if anybody could help, what is something they could help with? You know, really, the, the biggest thing that we need help with is, is getting veterans to fill out the, the questionnaire, um, getting, getting guys to fill out the, 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 the info, send it in, and, and, and want to get involved. Um, as far as sponsorship goes, we, we have some really good sponsors that have come on board and, they, and they've been helping us for a while. Uh, we have a company called r, r Dog Gear. Man, they build collars and leashes, family-owned company. Marty and his wife are two of the greatest people you'll ever meet. Um, they make sure every veteran goes home with a collar and a leash, a uh, nice slip lead. Um, 
and then we have uh, Kinetic Dog Foods came on board uh, not too long ago. They send every veteran home with a free bag of food. Um, it, it, and just the support from the company itself. I mean, they've they've done a really good job at, at trying to help us as much as they possibly can. And, you know, hopefully as we grow, they can they can do a little more. Um, and then we have a company in out of Florida called Fit and Fetch Outdoors, a uh, multivitamin CBD company. Um, I personally give it to my dog. Um, they're, they've come on board to give a free, you know, a free bottle of this multivitamin to every veteran. Um, actually, a few breeders that are involved in this program have started using it in their breeding programs, um, as well as some of their dogs on pro trucks as, you know, try to help with some performance, uh, maybe some line anxiety issues, um, especially recovery, those types of things. You know, I mean, we beat our dogs down. I mean, our dogs run hard. They, people don't understand it's not a normal dog. You can't just running five miles doesn't do much. It, you know, we yeah. need to run 30 miles a day, not five miles a day, right? Where your dog it jogs with you, it's not the same athlete. Um, and that's really what these dogs are. They're athletes, uh, and they're and they're really designed to to help us in so many different ways. I mean, I think the lab breed really any retriever breed, I think the bond that it creates with the, with its companion is next to none. I mean, the, it doesn't matter whether you're hunting next to a Boykin or a Spaniel or a Poodle or, or a Golden Swamp Collie, whatever you want to call it. You know, it doesn't matter. You're, that dog's pretty in tune with you. Um, I think that relationship between, between hunter, dog, handler, and dog um, is something you can't find anywhere else. Uh, but he really, Hugo, you know, what, well, Hugo, what is something you would say to other veterans that are thinking about getting in the program or thinking about applying or, uh, you know, you know, you obviously something made you jump ship and go ahead and sign up and get it done. So what would be something you'd like to put out there? Well, well I'll be honest. I, we got to find folks that are interested in the sport, first of all. Uh, uh, but it's a, it's a welcoming community. It's a, it's an awesome, uh, it, it doesn't require a lot of uh, athleticism. If you're, if you're somewhat physically limit, limited, uh, it's a sport that you, you, can, uh, you can participate in. Uh, the folks that I've seen run hunt tests, I mean, there's some, there's some folks that are challenged. And, uh, and, I, and I think that a lot of veterans can get into the sport. It's, it's uh, challenging uh, in your mind. Uh, it, 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 it brings you focus. It brings you uh, calmness because the dog feeds off of your energy. And, and you want, and, and if you want your dog to progress, you've got to be able to control yourself within because your, your dog is going to read a lot of that inner, inner, inner things that you've got going on. And I think it's a great way to, to, for you to help yourself regarding controlling your own emotions. Um, it's something that I found for myself is that, uh, th there's some, there's some some issues that I have that this dog has helped me tremendously and and because and the only reason for that is because I know that she feeds off of my energy so if I want her to succeed I really have to control my own energy um but man it's a it's a great community it's a it's a challenge um it, but it's at the same time it's home awesome well then I, I think it's a great program I said when Craig fired it off I just come home from a mission I've been on and he and I got to talking and I said, once, they, once you get it rolling, get it set up, get some people that's going through it a couple times, let's get y'all on camera and, uh, and talk about it a little bit. So maybe other people, you know, have some interest in it and it can reach out and, and find people that can get involved and can help out and either a help, either help out and find veterans and provide support and provide products or B actually get a dog, be a veteran, get a dog and go through the process, start training and start having something to work through, you know, daily during that process. And, and it's not something that you need a professional right. to help you yes, with. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I think I've, I've did it with YouTube and a CD, you know, just to get her to the started level. But definitely to go further from this, I definitely need assistance. Um, but but there, there are folks there that are more than willing to help. Awesome. Well, it's nice talking to you, Hugo. Um, Craig, in closing, man, I think we've heard everything. Um, you got anything you want to put out, how everybody can reach you, where they can find the program? Yeah, man, you can uh, you can find us on Facebook at Here to the Line. Uh, we have uh, 
we'll have a website here here probably in the next month, month and a half. Um, you can also find us on Instagram at hero, the number two, the line. Um, Marie is on there posting information every day. Um, if you're a veteran, there's a flyer on our Facebook page. Uh, you can grab that flyer or set of questionnaires on there. Um, and, and there's an email on there to send to. That email comes directly to me. Um, and we'll, we'll put you in a queue and, and hopefully find more puppies to give away. We have, a, we have hopefully one for sure now going home at the end of October, um, working on maybe trying to give a couple more away. Um, so if there is anybody that's interested in getting involved, uh, definitely, uh, definitely get in on it. Awesome. Well, hey, guys, I appreciate y'all's time. I'm glad we was able to link up, get this information put out, and talk to you, Craig. And Hugo was able to, to, to get in on and give us some his personal experience with the program. Like I said, I think it's great. The more programs we have like this, the more people want to reach out and either help vets or give vets something to do after they get out and get people in our sport at the same time, I think it's a win-win double edge on that. And so I, I think it just goes up from here. So guys, I appreciate y'all's time. Thanks for being on here with me. And I look forward to seeing what y'all get through with this in the future. Hey, thank All you. Right, thank man, you. I appreciate it. All right, man. Until next time, Thanks. we'll talk to y'all. Most definitely.